Welcome to the Tech Arena, featuring authentic discussions between tech's leading innovators and our host, Allison Klein. Now, let's step into the arena. Tech Arena. My name is Allison Klein, and we are recording this week at OCP Lisbon. I'm so glad to be joined by Don Barnston, VP of Product at Credo. Welcome to the program, Don. Thank you so much for having me. So this is the first time that Credo has been on the show. So why don't we just start with an introduction of the company and your role? Sure. So Credo is a uh, pure play interconnect company. We're one of a very small number of companies who develop uh, what are called certain serializers and deserializers. And then we do that in a variety of ways. We license those out to folks who include them in larger uh, semiconductors. We build many of our own ICs. Um, ICs for communications, uh, for optical communication, as well as cloud communication. Um, and then we build them into end products. And what I'm actually responsible for at Credo is a, a product line called our Active Electrical Cables, which are copper cables that have recon uh, that allows the copper to be thinner, uh, allows us to go longer distances, and then add some advanced functionality, primarily for our customers. So when you look at the cabling challenges in the data center, I don't think that they're getting any easier. Why don't you describe the current landscape today and um, how you're seeing uh, operators challenged by wanting to go faster and having capability limitations. Yeah, it's really interesting. The um, the infrastructure of the data center is often defined uh, a long time ago, maybe more than a decade ago. So our large customers have standardized in 600 millimeter racks, which have a pretty small area allocated for cable management. But over the last decade, and I would say in particular in the last two years with AI, the amount of interconnect that they're trying to fit into a rack has started to grow exponentially. Uh, and so uh, initially, uh, customers were using patch cloth connectivity, what are called uh, directed patch cables or DAS. But they found as they went to the 100 and 200 gigabit generation, well, they still had to run out of space for these passive propagators. And so the active electrical cables that uh, we created reduced the amount of volume that they took by about 75%. Mm -hmm. But because they're active, we can also add quite a bit of advanced functionality into them to suit each uh, type of scale's needs, which has been a lot of the development we've done. So talk to me about that advanced functionality. What are you able to do with the next? So one of the things that we started doing, um, our, our customer Microsoft came to us and had a reliability issue. Uh, they were having a single top of rack switch per, uh, per rack of their general compute. And if that switch had an outage or failed, it would take down that entire rack. And that turned out to be a substantial reliability issue for you. Um, there's been a lot of approaches to going to multiple top of rack switches in the past, but those didn't work well in the Microsoft ecosystem. So they asked us to build them an active cable that would manage the failover process directly. Um, and so uh, if one of the top of rack switches goes out, the cable is able to near instantaneously fail over to the second switch, and the whole network can converge in the order of, say, 50, 50 milliseconds. Um, what that allowed them to do was to add this level of redundancy and substantially improve their reliability without having to impact any of the compute customers at all, because the server doesn't have to participate in this. So for their infrastructure as a service customers, they can add this capability. It turned out it gave them about a 30x improvement in reliability, and they can do that entirely seamlessly to their end customers. And so that product, which uh, Microsoft publicly calls the uh, Y cable, is the foundation of their demo compute today. That is fascinating, and I would have never thought a cable could do so much for its off rack switch. Um, and that, that reliability gain is incredible. Now, you're here giving a course. Can you tell me about what you're teaching? Yeah, so I'm talking about coherent optic, um, which is a new type of long range plug of line. And some of the challenges that our customers have run into in the building, uh, and then a new product that we put together to help them address those changes. When you look at data centers and you look at um, networking technologies, every advancement of speed brings about a conversation of, is this the moment that we pivot completely to optimal? And yet copper continues to survive. How do you view the connection between copper and optic today? And where do you think we're going with that? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. You always think copper's dead and then it's on. The thing about copper is it's really, really low power, it's low cost, and it's extremely reliable. And so our customers can use copper, they almost always prefer to. So it used to be that the whole data center was built. 
then as we went to the 10 gigabit generation, that sort of shrunk down to maybe the row of servers, so maybe 20 meters of servers. And then as we went to the 100 gigabit generation, that kind of shrunk down to the rack of servers. And that's where we're at today, is most racks of servers and AI devices are interconnected with copper between the, uh, the appliance or the server and the top of rack switch. And then we're using optical where we have to, which is for rack to rack connections, typically more than about three meters long. Now, coherent objects have been burned the word coherent associated with computing for the last 20, 30 years, but never to optics. What do you mean by coherent optics, and why is this an important thing? To so the optics that are used inside data centers are called gray optics, and they work well up to about two kilometers in reach, which really means when you take into account the writing, it's effectively anywhere inside the building. But that's only part of the problem. If you want to go outside the building, if you want to go between buildings, or if you want to go around the metro area, you have to modulate the light in a different way. And that's what I'll call coherent optics. And so coherent optics used to be deployed um, in a, uh, a transponder structure, which would basically be a great big box if you want. Um, but now they're available in a pluggable form factor. So they actually have the same form factor as the optics that we use in the data center. And reuse a lot of the uh, a lot of the pieces that we built, but it's created a lot of new challenges for our customers. Um, that they're uh, they're having some some difficulties some growing again. Can you talk a little bit about why folks are choosing to connect building to building and across a, and across a um, city? And what are the kind of use cases that they're solving? Sure, sure. So in the uh, the classic one would be a service provider. If you look at how you get your home internet or how your business gets its internet, there's a service provider who's typically running a large metro ring around the city and connecting many thousands or tens of thousands of folks together over tens of hundreds of kilometers um, in order to provide and provision internet service. So classic internet service uh, provisioning um, is a perfect use case for this. But uh, in the previous cases, these very large data centers that we're here at the conference talking about, they're interconnected to each other using extremely high bandwidth so that you can move more clothes back and forth, or indeed, sometimes the uh, data centers can even interoperate in the same way. And so those require links that are well in excess of two kilometers. Yeah. Uh, and so here in office, we become the reinforced student. When you look at that high capacity data center, there's you know, data centers that I think have multiple football fields long. It's got thousands of servers in them. What are the challenges today in terms of the interconnection between all of those boxes? And how does cabling fit into the challenge? So the challenge is, as soon as you leave the building, it's kind of your realm of security. So at first order, you have to encrypt all of that time, which most of our customers do really at the entrance to the building. So they use a protocol called Max Sex that uh, Rito helps develop. Um, and they encrypt all of that traffic. But then they have to modulate it in this, uh, uh, in, this uh, in this fashion to be able to send it over fiber for maybe 100 or more kilometers without having to repeat or amplify it. And so, so those coherent well, optics that are enable you to do that, um, they consume, as you might imagine, a lot more power than an optic, but it goes a couple of kilometers. And they're a lot more complex because they're having to uh, look at a lot of parameters of the fiber that we don't care so much about inside of the data center. So they're a lot, lot more difficult to manage. And I think those are really two of the challenges that have um, uh, stalled the adoption of these coherent optics that we're hoping to So CP so critical in terms of the development of technology in this arena? And, and why is this show something that you wanted to prioritize? So OCP is really the only place where all of the users and developers of this technology come together and try to solve those back problems. So a lot of standards bodies exist, and they create a standard. They can sort of think of it as a, a set of ingredients um, that you can choose. Which would lead to be an example. There's various multi-source agreements that are an example. But at OCP, we say, okay, how does this actually work together so that we can give a solution to the industry that is easy to deploy, easy to maintain, um, and provides the necessary cost to rely on? So we're really looking at the entirety of the problem rather than just perhaps a, a few technical and when you look at the market and how it's shaping up in 20, you see the opportunity primarily um, across your portfolio? Yeah, well, you can't talk about point one four without talking about our vision challenges. And so AI is driving interconnected cities at a rate that we've never seen before. Because these models have gotten much too large to run on the zero too large to run on even a rack or a row of computers, they're running on a data center scale. And so the interconnect that's necessary inside the data center to support that is just 
pay or frequent pays to pay or the result of using the right to pay the salary. Where do you see the industry in terms of being poised for, for the demand? And is there technology that is going to be discussed at OCP in Lisbon this week that will help shape the future? Yeah, I think the industry is well poised to support the demand, um, at least for the next 18 months, and see what challenges we have beyond that. So it's part of the board in this uh, industry. I think at UCP in Lisbon, we've got uh, a lot of end users talking about the challenges that they face. And a lot of the technology is developed for the large US vector standards. So what's interesting in Lisbon is talking about how can we take that technology and make it accessible to the broader base of end users that exist in the Caribbean market, also in North America and in Asia. That is fascinating, Don. I think this is a really interesting area of the ecosystem. I'm so glad that you spent some time with us. I'm sure my listeners are interested in learning more about Credo. Where would you send them for more information and to engage your team? So you can obviously visit our website, uh, www.credosemi.com, or you can navigate to the Recruitment uh, Tuesday Project events page and you can watch the uh, uh, the uh, seminar that I'm going on today or find other links to Credo. Thanks so much for being here today and spending a bit of your OCP time with me. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining the Tech Arena. Subscribe and engage at our website, thetecharena.net. All content is copyright by the Tech Arena. 